China holds a dominant position worldwide not only in the manufacturing of tobacco but also in the use of it. It is responsible for 37% of the world's total tobacco production and has 350 million smokers. Because of the prevalence of tobacco usage and the detrimental impacts it produces, the general public's attention has been brought to the ongoing smoking pandemic. Researchers have discovered a number of correlations between smoking and various problems, some of which include the following but are not limited to the following. Substance addiction or dependency, long hours at work, loneliness, trauma, broken families, child abuse, behavioral disorders, anxiety, and much more. Passive smoking has an effect on the Chinese elderly in every stage of life, including the ability to think clearly, the risk of depression, the capacity for daily living, the likelihood of self-reported chronic conditions, and the reduction in daily living capacity. Passive smoking also increases the likelihood of self-reported chronic conditions. In recent years, there has been a growth in the number of studies looking at the negative impact that smoking has on one's working memory. According to the findings of a research that tracked the cognitive capacities of eight heavy smokers over the course of several years, nicotine was a substantial contributor to the decline in those smokers' abilities. Long-term smokers have a greater propensity to suffer feelings of depression and anxiety, and their cognitive performance is worse on average than that of people who do not smoke. When people are young, their working memories are especially susceptible to the negative consequences of smoking. If you are between the ages of 43 and 53 and smoke more than 20 cigarettes a day, the rate at which your memory will deteriorate will be significantly quicker than if you were younger. When compared to individuals who have never smoked, older smokers who smoke or smoked had a more severe decline in memory and cognitive functioning, as well as a greater risk for Alzheimer's disease. The reason for this is that the dangerous substances in cigarettes or nicotine have a significant impact on the quality of sleep that individuals get, which in turn disrupts their memory and the cognitive processes in their bodies. The capacity of smokers' working memories and the cognitive efficiency of smokers are much lower than those of non-smokers. Hence, persons should pay attention to the connection between smoking and memory degradation. However, research has shown that those who have only recently started smoking have a better working memory and ability than those who have never smoked. As a person ages, their memory, like the rest of their body, experiences a decrease. A significant amount of research has been done to discover whether or not smoking hastens the decrease in memory. In studies that used randomized controlled trials, researchers had a far easier time making direct comparisons between the behaviors and results of smokers and non-smokers. For randomized controlled trials, a considerable number of volunteers are required, who are thereafter assigned at random to either the smoking group or the non-smoking group. However, Carrying out an experiment of this nature is not only difficult but also goes against the ethical standards of the scientific community. The greatest tactic to use for addressing this issue is observation. Nevertheless, it is possible to draw the incorrect conclusions by basing them on the most immediately observable facts and not making any alterations to the data. If one were to compare the best memories of smokers with the worst memories of non-smokers, for example, one would find that smoking had no impact on one's memory in either direction. In contrast to studies that employ randomized grouping, which lessens the influence that confounding variables have on treatment and control groups, observation studies do not use this methodology. Because of this, bias in a systemic form might readily emerge. With the use of the propensity score matching PSM, method, this problem could be solved, and the elements that were causing confusion between the two groups could be eliminated. The PSM approach was used in this work to pair together datasets for analysis. The propensity score was utilized in order to regulate confounding factors and adjust for estimation bias caused by self-selection.